<laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Everyday Struggle in the Desk of Academics. And Wayno here. What you call those socks at? <sighs> I bought his mom a new car this weekend. That made yes. me emotional on Instagram. Class act academic. Yo, listen, man, I try, man. Salute to Mama Demix, man. I just got to say salute to the mama. You know? She listen. was so shocked. Did she she Yo, cried? She was, I couldn't see close up, but no, she was so she emotional. She was in tears. She was in tears. And I love my mom, though. Listen, hey, for everybody who out there, like, who's trying to, you know, like, I grew up in a single parent home. Listen, I had to make sure like, my mom get the crib before me. I'm young. I'm going to get my shit. So, you know, like, you got to give back to your parents. Like, it doesn't have to only be your mom, your mom, your dad, whoever takes care of you. They made sacrifice for you. You better make a couple of sacrifices for them. And trust me, a little Aww. couple of dollars ain't nothing. Academics. I'm broke, though. A yeah, little couple of dollars ain't nothing. Guys, I'm broke. he's still going to keep up this I'm narrative. Back broke. Back bro, you on the I'll, ground though? Huh? Yeah, you I'm on the ground. ground. I'm on the ground, man. You know? Nah, but I, I I gotta salute you at man to man, man. That was very, very dope. Inspired me. I nah, nah, appreciate inspired it. me. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. You know, I was thinking about it long hard. You know, honestly, I'm gonna tell you the breaking point. Mm -hmm. A month and a half before, she calls me and she says her car left her at the side of the road and she was waiting on AAA. And Aww. I felt so embarrassed. My mama should never have to work or struggle in her life for anything. Mm -hmm. And I made up my mind at that moment. So, you know. It was happy to happen, and I'm happy that she, I didn't think she was going to cry. Like, I've mm -hmm. never, you know, I've seen my mom cry at times, but, like, I felt, like, really helpless. I've never seen her cry tears of joy. Ah. So, that was good. That's, like, the proudest feeling as a kid ever, right? Yo, happy birthday I'm to Mama Demix. Happy birthday, Mama Demix. Um, What'd y'all do for the weekend? I didn't buy anyone a new whip. I Just... actually chilled with my dad over this weekend. Really? Mm. Yeah, I chilled with my dad. I, I, I had a little cold. My, my daughter had to go to, uh, to dance class, and it's in the Bronx, so I went to go... See my dad just sat in the crib. My dad took care of me this weekend. Uh -huh. you know I mean? Hey, if, by the way, you know, while we, we sit here and we <clears throat> discuss a lot of hip hop and we have our own lives and we all working, mm -hmm. super important with family time. I do have a lot of respect for Wayno and how he balances time with his family and also work. Because it's hard. Thank you know, God. sometimes like, my mom, <laughs> my mom see my mom be like, yo, you didn't answer my call. I'm like, mom, <laughs> come on. But, you know, it's tough. It's tough. Nah, it is tough. It's, it's a fine line balancing, um, especially when you're in the entertainment industry. Absolutely. But you do it very, very well. Thank you, guys. We all saluting each other today. I know some bullshit all is coming right. with academic. Too much positivity. Man. <laughs> yeah, too much positivity. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, go ahead. He about to say right. something. He about to let something on one of us. Mom, if you're watching, stop watching right here. Okay? <laughs> the positivity is done. <laughs> positivity is done. Um, all right. So a few months ago, we talked about Instagram wanting to test a new feature where likes would be hidden from the public. Just you could see it. And I believe they started testing it in some places like Canada. So last week, Instagram CEO Adam Mastery, if I'm saying that right, announced that likes are going to be hidden in the U.S. starting this week, just in select cities are testing it out. Of course, people had a lot of feelings about this, so Cardi posted an IG story clip where she explained that she actually thinks it's the comments that make Instagram nasty, not the likes. Check it out. So, from the beginning of Instagram, we had likes. And I feel like in the beginning of Instagram, everything was just so fun. People wanted to post their pictures, get likes. It was just a place where you could see pictures and then it started to become videos. Where I think that Instagram got a little nasty and it just took a weird turn was when people started to like the comments when you the way they were allowed to like comments or to reply back to somebody's comments. There's some people that don't have a life. So the only way that they can interact is arguing back. I see a lot of people dedicate their time into saying the most craziest, absurd shit on um comments just for likes and comment backs and I thought I think it's funny that we play the visual of just her head here. So when right. we were talking about this last week, we were talking about sort of kids growing up only on social media, having to always compare your life to other people. It does affect them. That's like an issue. But Cardi does make a good point here as well. What do you guys think? Is the comment section actually worse than people seeing the count on your post? Absolutely. I think the comment section is worse. But the thing about the likes is like likes, people use the likes to kind of determine their status right. amongst their peers, right? And I think that when they when they take the likes away, all it's gonna do is make people screenshot their likes and post their likes. Like I I've been hearing that, but are people <laughs> really gonna do that? Where you would screenshot it and put it on your IG story? Yeah, I think that that's still gonna happen. Like that seems this seems we've seen crazier extreme. things happen on Instagram. Wow. Um, but but um, I don't mind. Like for me, I don't I don't really care. Like if, if the whole thing about you posting your content and you seeing your engagement is for you. Um, I think that you still should be able to leverage that, right? Because mm. I see a lot of people saying that um. No, in terms of dealing with brands, that's how they <clears> kind of <throat> determine like what their sponsorship money they give up or engagement, et cetera. So I think like that will never leave, but I don't care about the 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 um 
likes leaving, but the the comment section is crazy because mm -hmm. anybody can say anything mm -hmm. they feel like saying to you at any moment, and if you respond, then you're emotional. Like, nothing's wrong with a person taking time out of their day to disturb you, mm -hmm. to say all types of nasty things about you, to allege things about you, and then as soon as you say, fuck you, then it's like, oh, you got time to respond? Yeah, <laughs> motherfuckers, 24 hours in a day. It ain't like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, listen, this is how I look at it. It's both. Like, it's... You know, it's hard to just pick uh, pinpoint one. You know, Cardi's looking at it from the spectrum of, hey, I've always made content, or even from the the, the genesis of how Instagram just like came about, mm -hmm. you post pictures and it was just all about likes. But we do have to acknowledge that a lot of these people now, like they're doing it for the likes as well. They're Absolutely. doing it for the comments, but they're Absolutely. doing it for the likes. Absolutely. Like I've seen people repost the same picture four or five times because the likes ain't right. Because the likes ain't right. You know, yeah, I, I've yeah. seen people wow. like look at their feed and they're like, oh, well, this got 200 likes and usually I'm getting 800 likes. I must not look attractive in this particular <clears throat> picture. They take it down, you know, again. And I want to like, I hate to bring anything with Cardi. I hate to bring Nikki into it. But like Nikki was making some decent points because she spoke on this too. Mm -hmm. And she was saying she believes this is more than just a, a issue that, like Instagram is trying to like curtail around like people's feelings and emotions and trying to make sure that people don't have like either body issues or, or, or just self-esteem issues. I do think it's a little bit more because like, I don't think either or will actually fix the problem. You mean right? in terms of more in what way? Like it's more business related or it's just mean, deeper issues? Like I, I do humans. think, I, I think it's more business related. And also I do think Instagram, which is owned by Facebook, they're in a place where they can't win. Hmm. They're in a place where, you know, Facebook, and again, keep in mind, Facebook owns Instagram. Right. Like, you know, they, they do try to have like a separate territory there, but, but it's all in the same, same company. Thing, right. And Facebook is going through like something they probably never predicted they would ever go through where people are getting at them for how they even deal with politics. Hmm. And basically, they like all these companies like they're trying to make money mm -hmm. right they're not trying to get criticism this and third and then when people are blaming your platform for their body issues or people are blaming them for oh so and so may be altering their body or hurt themselves based on like your algorithms you kind of feel hopeless but i did i i, I like what nikki said nikki nikki said she does believe this is also a business play a lot of people are using instagram like how many rappers who get deals off Instagram? Oh, right. it, it, it's the number one place, even more than if you're uploading. People always tell me like, yo, yo, since you said like your SoundCloud is kind of declining, like where's the next place for us to get discovered? Nigga, it's, it's Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, it's, it's Instagram. It's Instagram. If you're getting good engagement there, especially around content that relates to music, your previews or like you posting that your songs is up, labels are some, at some point, a is gonna look at it and be like, yo, this guy's kinda on, on a come up. Mm -hmm. and, and, and her theory, which to be honest, I had to subscribe to a bit, mm -hmm. hey, may, the platform might be looking at it to say, a lot of y'all are creating business, that's all good, but how does that fold into our business model? If you think about Facebook and you think about Instagram, just think about, and, and, and again, I might be a little bit like on some conspiracy theories with this shit. <laughs> they might not give a fuck about people. Mm -hmm. In, in reality, every year, these platforms, they diminish your engagement. So if you have a million followers, they tell you that when you post something, you only get to like 10% of it. Yeah, right. Then they diminish it, 8%, 7%. Really what they want you to do while they're bringing that down, I can tell you for Facebook pages, it used to be a good chunk, they diminished it so much. The only way to really talk to the people who even follow you, yeah. you have to pay the platform. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You so gotta the, pay the so platform. sponsored ads. Right. You got to pay the platform to access the people who already follow you. That could be a business play for Instagram, who still is figuring out how to make money. Right. They're right. trying the video thing. They're trying to figure out deals with music and like labels to make sure. Like, so they're trying to figure out that that this might be straight a business play. However, you know, I think it's super complicated. All right. Yeah. So let's get this fan question off. We could talk a little bit more about this. So, of course, people wanted to know how this would affect rappers. That's the first question. Just generally, how do you think it's going to affect rappers? And then another person said, it looks like a lot of rappers will suffer from Instagram hiding likes. Do you think the update could actually benefit a new and upcoming rapper? And if so, in what way? I have no idea, but I will say it will definitely hurt it because, unfortunately, there's tons of talent that I find, like, through Instagram. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the first question is, how many followers do they have? 
You know what I mean? Or, or, or like, what's the engagement on their music? But so when you check in engagement, are you sort of seeing their comment section? Or are you looking at the likes ratio to the comments? Me personally, I don't, I, I care about like talent uh -huh. more than anything, but like when it becomes a larger conversation when you're dealing with other executives, it's like the engagement. So um, of course, like you see somebody with 300,000 followers and then you look at look on their likes and it's only 200 likes, you know mm -hmm. that the, the followers are probably fake and, engage, and there's no engagement. So you, I, Instagram is a great scale to see like what's the talk about. Because if you see something, sometimes you might see something that's 350,000 views and it's 100,000 likes and this kid is unsigned and a lot of people's talking and it might be too late. So it kind of lets you know how, how do you engage the artists, like how do you come at them, what they're probably going to want. You could probably think on what's going to happen based on that palette. So it's going to affect a lot of different things, especially in music business. You know, initially when this got uh, like kind of announced, you know, like to the naive and really simple minds at first on just initial thinking, you're like, yo, all the Instagram models' careers are dead. You know, mm -hmm. right? Like, so that's the first thing you think, but you don't really realize how it affects everybody else who primarily their business is through Instagram. Right. Mm -hmm. Like Instagram is like, like really just think about it now. You know, like first of all, you know, I have a hip hop platform that's based on Instagram as well. Mm -hmm. um, partly, but still a good part of it, right? right. Think about Worldstar. Man, in 2006, man, you go to worldstarhiphop.com. Mm -hmm. These days, Worldstar is mostly either on YouTube on or on Instagram. Right. People are going to Instagram more than they're going to websites. Right. They have such a power, and I understand, and this is why, like, I'm not going to agree with Cardi to say it's the comments. I think you almost have to say, no, don't touch it at all, because they'll start at the likes. Right. Then they'll start saying, okay, no comments. Right. Mm -hmm. Or they, then they'll get to, okay, no views. Right. Right? And then to the point where it's like, hey, listen, of course you want to deal with, like, bullying and all these other things in a very, very delicate way, but, like, this is a platform that people have launched their businesses and a lot of people survive off this ecosystem. So let's say they do keep this. I don't know if I'll see the average person screenshotting their likes to share it. Maybe, maybe you never so, know. No, but then it that. wouldn't be far-fetched for artists I ask, or influencers to do that, I assume, with brands if they ask. Maybe well, that will become I'm guessing if, norm? real quick, I, I'm guessing like if, because I've seen sites that like brands use to determine how much money they should pay you. Hmm. Like literally can put mm -hmm. your at in a system and it runs down and it tells me how much I'm worth via appearance. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that'll, that that would change because I think like your yeah, analytics would still be there based on your at and your engagement. But um, people are definitely I, I, I think it's going to make people do more shit to get more attention. Mm -hmm. And th and this is and I like you hate to bring Nikki into something with Cardi. I hate to bring Jay-Z up. Right. But Jay-Z said um, we make this shit what it is. Then when we try to go get a deal with them, they turn us down. Now, if, let's say, I take Jay-Z out of it. Let's say Nas or Swiss Beats, or whomever starts their own social media platform, you know what's the first thing they're going to do? Shit on it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To say, yo, we can keep all these different things, and we, we found a new algorithm on how to work this shit where there's no bullying and all that. People are going to be like, I ain't giving Swiss Beats my money. That nigga got enough money. That's the first thing they're going to say. Right. I do have a solution, a possible solution for... Um, Instagram and it's for them to learn from their parent company Facebook back when Facebook just started Facebook started as you know a, a, a Social media network that was very different from the my schools that though, right? yeah, you had yeah. to have a, a, a School email address. It was kind of more controlled which means if you had a if you sign up with your one school email address You're not gonna troll your way to get banned and then you think you can come back right. on Instagram Niggas say and will post anything or do anything and possibly even jeopardize their account because they could always make 30 other, uh, other accounts. Like, yeah. It's like if they at least put a little bit more accountability or even just say, listen, man, we're going to separate this shit because I do think your Facebook was so good back then, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? You had people who weren't like 14-year-olds trolling people, right? You didn't have people like just using a platform to bully people, which they wouldn't do in real life. You made made a little bit more accountability. I don't know how you do it. I'm not saying put, have people put in their socials or something like that, yeah. but something where like, hey, hey, you're in this club that's called Instagram. If you fuck up, nigga, you're, you're banned on everything for the next year. I that's guarantee you. Wow. That yeah, is tough, but tough, the right? trolling Amazing. and all that, that's why the comments are toxic. That's what, that's what Cardi's talking about. Right, right. You get a 14 year old who's talking to you and they're pretending like they're 30, mm -hmm. And they're talking crazy. Now you want to fight them. Now <laughs> right. you want to pull up. Right. <laughs>
And we've seen that with Cardi. Speaking right. of playing up. Right. Yeah. All right. So last week, uh, Cardi apparently shaded Nicki in a tweet. She was responding to a fan who mentioned Nicki's new collab with Carol G. Uh, so Cardi said she was offered the song before and passed. That tweet upset the barb. So one of them decided to tweet at Cardi, the wrong person to tweet this at, don't get beat up, to which Cardi responded by who and gave her location. And then actually just take a look. I'll see you, sweetie. <laughs> I'm on the block, pull up, skirt, skirt, where you at? <laughs> I wanna we fight you, fight you we, We're standing on the same corner at the same time. Literally, I mean, how can I be fucking a bro? No, we're at this corner. It's like, you troll, I troll. We're fans! I'm not about trolls. I post fuck up. Wanna we want to fight you, Yes, yes. Aww. Love you. Love you. Okay. Hi. Hold on. Huh? The so this is what comes out of the comment section, to her point. Um, Cardi need to chill the fuck out. <laughs> nah, I, I ain't gonna lie because, um, you know, I mean, first off, you see who the type of person is that's trolling her, right? Secondly, that's dangerous. That's very dangerous. She got a whole lot to lose. Mm. And um, we got to start, like, she has to, I know she looks at, she knows that she's a fucking superstar. I'm trying to get the right word. She knows that she's a superstar, but that bullshit would not She's still with that bullshit. And at any point in time, like, let's say she does pull up. It's nothing wrong with pulling up, but what if it's 30 people? You ain't gonna fight 30 people. And you shouldn't be fighting nobody anyway, like you a fucking superstar. And But the thing is, the thing is, is that people say anything to you and think that you're not a human being and that you can't be affected. Right. But yeah, I, I hope Cardi never does something like that ever again in life. I'm pretty sure she will. And here's the thing. Remember we had that conversation about what's a fan? Is that not a fan? Nah. Listen, that's a fan. And when, when, they, when confronted with you, they tell you they're a fan. But unfortunately, the way how social media works, you will ignore 88 good comments. Yo, Wayno, you dope. Yo, Wayno, you be spitting knowledge. <laughs> Damn, Wayno, you my nigga. But that one comment, like, yo, this fuck nigga Wayne over there. If I saw him, I was slapping. You got to respond. But that's how it is. It's the yeah, nature of, right. of human beings. Yeah. But, and, 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 and sometimes the fans have, have become wiser to realize, to say, hey, if I just want to, like, it's my dream to talk to you, I might just have to say some wrong shit to you for me to get to that point. Now, in terms of, like, pulling up, because Nikki fans, they were all about, they say, ah, you better keep the same energy. You said when Nikki... Says she's gonna break your jaw and do all this. You said she's having a meltdown. Is this meltdown status? And I do have to say, just like, and I had the same commentary about when Cardi threw the shoe. Mm -hmm. I said, it looks, it looks beneath her and kind of tasteless. Like, I won't call it a meltdown because it, it's something we've seen Cardi kind of do consistently. Mm. I don't agree with it. But here's the funny thing about it it helps. Like, for what fans know and love her for, the fans that do, mm -hmm. they love that shit. Yo, she's still real. She's still one of us. Like, I, unfortunately, I, I that's how they look at it. I can't You know, you because, right. like, but, but, that's not dope to me. You know, like, it, you pulling up on, because, again, it could go bad. Yeah. Also, it could even be those three motherfuckers out there and you start fighting them, which, by the way, they're dudes. Like, they're probably two, like, girls. Anyway, you, you go out there, you fight them. Now they suing you. Right. Could be all bad. However... For whatever reason, like, it just appears that Cardi's fan base, they love when they see those moments that she's that same hood chick from, you know, the Bronx. I love that about her, too. But, I, I, but you know, we could be having a different conversation right now if things go wrong. So it's like... I agree. The, the thing is, is that I, I, would, I would hope that... And I, I know that her team, certain people on her team is probably furious of her doing something like that, because I would be. Yeah. You know, like, but yeah, because it's, it's dangerous. Like... You a mom, you know what I mean? I, like you're a mom. You it, even if that's the thing, people always want to say they want to fight. You don't. You can still win a fight and get hurt. <laughs> like I, I want people to know that. Like you can still win and get hurt. So it's like, let's say something happens and now you can't fucking tour, or you can't do the Christmas special, or you can't do something that you got a, a, a big obligation for. She just got to think a little bit more in that sense. But um, troll hunting can be dangerous. It, it's very dangerous, and trollers is very dangerous for y'all too. Like please don't play out here and, and and that's why i always get to you know i commend the the, the artists like thug drake even to a great extent mm -hmm. like a lot of artists who like they, they ignore 
the trolls. Mm -hmm. Because niggas do get trolls. You know, you get trolled and it's trolled for a reaction. And to be honest, you get trolled to go viral. Like, that reaction for those people, they probably got like 5,000 followers. To them, it's worth it. They don't give two fucks. Like, their self-esteem and their, that embarrassment of just like being seen as a fraud, like yeah. someone who was talking crap and now the person shows up here, they don't care. Hey man, if they gonna do that, at least be selling a t-shirt or something. Like, be, <laughs> be doing something, like make something out of it. Like, oh, just do it, just to yeah. do it. Like, But think about it though. Do you think that even the biggest Michael Jackson fan back in the day, if they could somehow troll Michael Jackson. <laughs> I don't know, I, no, 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 seriously. <laughs> to, to pull up on the same street corner, like these are people that, they only get to see him Oh, yeah. Like, a handful of time in their lifetime. Right. But there's different levels of fans. I'm sure there were fans who would have done that, and also fans who loved him so deeply they would never dare. Just yeah, different people, yeah. you know what I mean? I Not think knowing it's, boundaries. It's a different a different uh, type of fan when you're a fan who appreciates your artist. Yeah. You know but I mean? no one has trolled you in real life, right, Ak? It's always love, as much as people are Not tight on the in and all the time. No, 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 but, but you got to understand it. It's like, you know, like... Like, I could tell you, I was in Toronto, some of some dude, like, was trolling me. Oh, really? You know, but like... But really again, disrespectfully or just kind of funny? No, like, I mean, I don't really, really even know what he would consider himself doing, but, like, I was leaving, like, the club. Like, I was getting a lot of love in Toronto, and this guy was like, yo, act, yo, post my artist now. And, like, I could have just ignored it, but but I was I was getting so much love showered on me while I was there. That's disrespectful, though. That's fine. Nah, 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 nah. It's the way he said the, it. The, the, hey. way, the way he said it was like, yo, or else something's going to happen. So, anyway, like, there was this kind of... Put, like, like you know, everybody get in the car, and I was like, nah, let me have a conversation with him. And I had a conversation. I, I said, listen, brother, like, I'm having a great time out here. I love Toronto. Mm -hmm. I'm showing everybody love. I'm giving a lot of people shout-outs and whatever. Like, I'm not even looking at it like that. But the way how people are approaching me, they're showing me love, and I'm, I'm, it's recipro like, I'm reciprocating, right? right? The way your approach is fucked up. I was, that's the only thing I was say saying. Yeah, yeah. Do you know that there was a motherfucker like down there like recording like? Of course, <laughs> yo, of course. I seen on the black dude like, yo, man, yo, shit was getting shaky with man. acting the six and the six For, man runs no, down. No, seriously. <laughs> so, so then you look at like situations like that to be like, damn, I understand why some, sometimes an artist or whoever don't even want to engage. Right. You know, like, yeah. do you really want to engage? Because for me, I'm like, yo, I could have just said, man, fuck you, just got in the car and dipped. But I'm like, let me just have a conversation with you because I understand being in that position. Yeah. I understand feeling like, yo, there's so many people around him, like, he's he's going to ignore me anyway. Let me just say some shit. So I just wanted to talk to him, and then they still recorded it. Yo, I get so excited when he leaves the house. It's really amazing. Right. No, I love He people. wants to talk. Make sure no, you run I up. I love and... people, yo. Yeah, like, I know. And, and, like, when you get genuine support, like, just like people like Cardi, like, mm -hmm. Cardi came up just like me in, a tr in the sense of she's from the internet, people supported her, and now, like, people consider her industry. You never ever want to get to the point where like you look at people and don't feel like you're you're not accessible to them or you can't relate to them. But people oftentimes you realize like right. people take that and they'll just try to get the best out of that moment mm -hmm. rather than build a like a, a relationship with you. Like right. somebody probably seen you and rather than saying yo way no, let me just dap you up real quick. You know, like hey, let me get your number or whatever. All right, bro. <laughs> no, bro. All right. I'm serious. Like, like they, they'll say something like on some troll shit, and that's how. Like, see, that's the thing. I can't. But now, look. You can say what you want, but if the person next to me handles you how they want to handle you, that, that you got to deal with that on your own. So. Oh, that's how you're rolling, Wayne. I, I'm just saying. I don't. I I, I walk around with, a, with wow. one line, not well, ten damn. sheets. Well, damn. You know okay. I, mean? I walk right. around with one line. Yo, let's get to some like more stories. Chases, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so A Boogie's last album has been doing really well. He's been touring a lot, but uh, he recently revealed that he wants to take a little break after this next project. He said, this might be my last project for a while. I want to take a break from music after Artist 2.0 tour is over. There's a lot of things I want to do in life, and it's just moving too fast for me to focus on everything at once. You know, but I'll never let my fans down. If you need me most, I'll be here. Uh, so, um... Some fans are already worried about this. Hey, Everyday Struggle, I'm a huge fan of A Boogie and said that he's going to take a break after he drops his next album. But I do believe people need breaks. Being that music comes and goes so fast, how much time off should he take so he doesn't lose his momentum and the appeal he has with fans? So you know this is different for every artist. But yeah. considering where Boogie is in his career, what are your thoughts? I think, I mean, uh, first off, I think he's, you know, Boogie is the male Mary J. Blige. You know what I mean? Oh, word? Yes. <laughs> he, 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 he finna drop a classic on this. Um, but nah, nah, I think um, he, he, does need, he does need a break. I mean, what people don't realize is how young he is. I think Boogie's only like 22, right? And think about the first time I heard him, like, really was in 2016. Mm -hmm. 
And from 2016, he's dropped artists, he's dropped, um, damn, what's the name of that EP? I forgot the name of the EP. Oh, hoodie Season, he's dropped. Uh, the Hoodie dropped Season, the but no, it's an EP before artists. that. International Artist. But it's, dropped, oh, I know what you're talking You know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. Because they nah, had, not the bigger artist. I, I think the joint that had uh, Thomas it's for, on it. It got macaroni on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, he's dropped so many things consecu consecutively, and he's been going, 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 going. He had a daughter in the in the middle of all this. Mm -hmm. He tours a, t a lot. He um he's responsible for a whole label and <coughs> a bunch of different artists that's trying to grow under him. And I think he just doesn't have time for himself. So I, I'm not mad at him taking a break. I think Boogie could get a year. Mm -hmm. He's he's at a point now where he could take a year, and if he drops a, a record here and there on a the soundtrack or something, we cool with that. But it, it's it's good that he's realizing this now. Because he's very, very young, you know? I think a is going through the <clears throat> that early grind burnout. Mm -hmm. And everybody goes through it where you're working, to be honest, probably some insane shit. And there's probably some young artists right now. Like, you're, you're, you're doing insane shit just to make it. And then once you make it, you're so in disbelief that you make it, that you keep up that pace. Yeah. But you realize you start neglecting things in your life, whether right. it's health, whether it's family, right. whether it's just time for yourself, and whether, to be, to be honest, your men mental well-being. And, you know, I think at this point he probably slaved away to make this album. He probably realized it's time, like, he take he takes a little bit away from music. And, you know, a lot of times music is a rat race. Right. You feel like if you're not on the circus, somebody about to take your spot. And you always hear you always hear talks and be like, oh, so-and-so is a new eight boogie. So, so you don't want to, like, let up off the gas. But, you know, it's... This is a good place for him to be, mm. where you feel like you can take that. Right. Fans shouldn't look at this as a negative. It should look. It should be looked at as a positive because when he comes back, the inspiration and for the new music coming out won't be out of I gotta put it out. It's hey, I'm inspired to give y'all more. Right. So right. this is a good thing. Absolutely. Shout Absolutely. out to Boogie. Shout out to Enjoy Boogie. your break. Uh, Ak, you wanna take us through some numbers, please? Oh. Oh. Well. Are you surprised every time? <laughs> he has to do wait, his, wait, his wait, wait, wait. Yo, who put this up? I did not say Kanye was selling under 120,000. Uh, I said Kanye was an under winner set over. I don't remember actually. Is, this, is that what happened? Roger, is this? Did I say this anyway? <laughs> I'm not reading the prompt on this one. They're claiming. They're claiming. If somebody finds the clip, Roger, it, check the tape. They're Apparently, saying that confirm, said confirm Kanye that you was, said it. They're saying I said Kanye was sell under 120,000. Wayne always said he would sell over because of the Trump Jr. tweet. <laughs> that sounds completely made up, but fine. <laughs> what? According to a uh, uh, hit Daily Double, and by the way, Kanye did sell uh, over 200. And according to hit Daily Double, Post Malone, Hollywood Bleeding, um, for this week is number one. Mm -hmm. Kanye's <laughs> album was number one last week. Uh, uh, however, uh, it was 75000 for Post Malone's album. And it's topped the chart for the fifth time, which, like, even, I don't know if this is your favorite Post Malone project, but it's still doing really well. Kanye West fell from number one to number two in the second week, mm -hmm. and it closed out selling 67,000 copies. Young boy still hanging in there, man, the YouTube king. And Strong. he is at number three with 59,000, while Summer Walker, uh, over it, is at number four with 55,000. People love Summer Walker, though. Know? Y'all watch Dan Daniel Caesar perform at the Camp Flogdall Festival. Like, yeah. yo, I'm telling you, man, the R&B wave right now, like, the way they're captivating audiences and the, their longevity on the charts, like, it's, I feel like it's a, it's a unheralded story. Absolutely. You know? But, um, yeah, salute to also uh, the Kirk, the ba Kirk by the baby, <laughs> and also so much fun by Young Thug, and little TJ, true to myself, which round out the top 10 hip-hop albums. There's actually just Damn, albums little, in... Little TJ did 23? Damn. Mm -hmm. I think and this, this is like is, third week. Third that's week. super good. Mm -hmm. Shit. Someone wants to know if you think Kanye's second week sales are a good look for him. Do you think he even cared about sales with this release? Kanye cares about um, bringing factories to Wyoming, mm -hmm. his 2024 presidential run, mm -hmm. um, Yeezy, and premarital sex. So I don't think he... Uh, Cares too much. <laughs> yeah, he sex. doesn't want people around him having premarital sex. So I don't think he cares much about numbers at this point. I, I really believe that that's going, this is going to be Kanye's last album. You think mm -mm. so? Nah. Yeah, I think it's going to be his last album. Really? The more I listen to Kanye, and I'm going to tell y'all now, y'all know y'all ain't when I like it. The more I listen to his interviews, mm -hmm. <laughs> the more I, 
I'm drinking the Kool Aid, man. You drinking the Kool Aid? Yo, Kanye spent some real shit, man. Oh my in his god, he done got academics. No, no, no. Oh, no, no. He done got yeah, he academics. Just, he's been talking like he's been uh, talking less about Trump, more about just like the world and his view of it. Yeah. Not gonna lie, he's spitting some truths, and I and I would be I would be a completely just like a blind hater if I didn't acknowledge that. Like his recent interview, which was some fashion stuff, and him and a designer talking mm -hmm. about his shoes and that's not made of algae. Like he was spitting some. Truth, he was even talking about, like, Nadeska got his look like, yo, nigga, please. <laughs> I didn't say nothing. <laughs> like, no, he spent some truths. I do believe that the music is not... Back when he did drop Yeezus, I, I, I thought the music was secondary. I don't even believe the music is even tertiary in what his vision and his goals are these days. Mm. I do believe it's somewhere in the top five. Mm -hmm. And the good thing is the fans who support him, I do believe he's putting out an album on, on Christmas Day. I mean, yeah, but I, I think, like, as far as, like, rap albums, I feel like after he puts out this Christmas album, because the Christmas album is, like, it's the uh, the Sunday Service Choir type album. Is it? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was hearing. It's, like, this... It's gonna be, like, the Sunday Service versions of the songs that he's putting out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I feel like music is an ancillary stuff for Kanye. Yeah, absolutely. Point. I feel like he's spitting rhetoric, and he's just gaining support, and I think he's setting up for the 2024. Well, since we're on the topic of Kanye West, he made a surprise appearance at the Fast Company 2019 Innovation Festival recently. Here's what he had to say. When I run for president in 2024, we want to definitely... No, what y'all laughing at? <laughs> when I run for president in 2024, we would have created so many jobs that I'm back on the run, I'm going to walk. What I'm saying is, when y'all read the headlines, Kanye's crazy. This is that, this is that. It's like one in three African Americans are in jail and all the celebrities are in jail also because they can't say nothing. They have no opinion. They so All right, so he's not playing. Goes on to say that he might legally change his name for a year. When people say it's crass to call yourself a billionaire, I might legally change my name to Christian genius billionaire Kanye West until y'all understand exactly what it is. Shouts out to him. Mm-hmm. Shouts out to him. Hey, I'm going to just tell y'all, I, I just, this is going to sound so crazy. It does sound crazy. Nothing you say ever sounds no. that crazy, economics. I understand a bit why he might be very understanding to Trump, because I seen, hold on now, he, I seen quotes, like Trump's whole thing is Yo, fake if Kanye hits you up to help on his campaign 2024, you're taking that check? I, I'm, no, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that, but... <laughs> I seen, you know how Trump says fake news and whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. I watched this interview and I guarantee, I seen mad people tweet about it and it, especially that line, the billionaire Christian innovator, best nigga ever, like, and everybody took that out of context. Like, that was such a joke. Like, he said that tongue in cheek and people ran, I see so many outlets, so many people tweet about that line that he said in a long ass interview, a 35 minute interview, and they acted like that was just, the thing that defined it. Definitely didn't. So I know the people, they're not watching for the context. Mm, if you're not so, watching the whole interview... So Trump is right about his fake news theories is what you're saying. No, no, I'm saying it, Kanye is a person who, I think he relates to Trump more in personality, more in, more than anything I mean, else. He said that. I, he, oh, he, he, all right, he, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If you also feel you're being mischaracterized <laughs> by... <laughs> Yo, that's I told you, Trump supporter this whole fucking time. No, fuck it's not time. Trump. Thing. Academics is a Trump yo, supporter. Yo, this whole time. I'm, I'm, with you. I'm <laughs> fucking with you, man. I'm fucking with you. That was Roger. Y'all right? got to uh. watch the interview. Okay. Just watch the interview, right. please. Not like, laughing he's, at you. He's not. He's not saying that much crazy stuff. I promise you, he's just not. Did you hear Roger just now? He I said, had no he idea. He said, who's man's? I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Yo, Roger, Roger, you did not watch that interview, bro. I'm not even taking... Yo, remember, I was giving Kanye the No, you're probably business. right. You're probably right. I like, haven't seen the whole interview. Y'all just got to watch the whole interview. The thing is, he he's not a great orator. So in the middle of making good points, and he was talking about, like, even an African-American who was... Uh, who's, who's Kanye's gonna to hire be... this guy to write his speeches. Can you imagine? Oh my no, god. No, but that's wow, that's man. been his problem for the whole time though. He's yeah. really bad at saying things, but if you listen to it in context, you realize that a lot of times he has good points. Not everything you agree with. Okay. I'm just saying <laughs> I'm, I can hear the nigga out, man. Wow. <laughs> Listen, man, that's what's up. I, I'm not knocking nobody. Listen, I'm not knocking nobody. If that's what you into, then that's what you yo, into, my nigga. Like, I'm not, yo, I'm not knocking that. Like, yo, yo. Uh, am I crazy? I'm not, I guess not. Like, like, yo, wait, shit. Man. Nigga got you. Yo, when, when he first started this shit, he was like, man, 
I don't play when it comes to God. No, no, this nigga no. play with God. That's <laughs> blasphemy. No, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just going back to what you were saying. He's like, yo, I'm not I playing with this nigga. Him, this nigga talking about God. <laughs> look, then he's like, yo, no, that that's nigga trying to sell his sneakers. Get to the then it's like, face. I, yeah, actually, he said, I can sit there like, yo, you know what? This, this is like an episode of the Boondocks when fucking um, Uncle Ruckus was listening to Ronald Reagan. Telling them, Shit. telling niggas in order for niggas to love themselves that they have to hate themselves. And, and listen, <laughs> for real, I'm, I'll put what? a bet out there. I got five dollars for ev- anybody who watches full interview and 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 just <laughs> highlight the parts that he's saying some wild. Trump and shit. Yeah. He's not even told me that. He's I'm not saying I'm just futuristic. Yeah, I'm not. Look, I'm not knocking that because look, if if he says that he wants to create jobs, wait, you, know, you gotta go to Sunday service, bro. I'm not going. You to gotta service. go to Sunday service. I'm just my saying, brother. like this shit. And it, remember, do you remember? And then Tom was like, you know what? It is a lot of black people I hate. And he started saying he hated himself. <laughs> you turning into Tom from fucking no. Boondocks. <laughs> yes, you are, man. You just turning into Tom. I agree with Kanye on a couple of. No, I'm not academic. I, I'm not, what? Again, this is going to shock y'all. What? Kanye is talking about more black issues than any rapper in hip hop to this day. Of course, other because Killer he Mike, has to. Other than Killer like, Mike. Uh-huh. Killer Mike and potentially T.I. can't tie Killer Mike's shoes when it comes to that. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. Other uh-huh. than those rappers, for the rest of the people that we love, that uh-huh. ain't talking about nothing but gold chains and diamond pendants. Oh, stop acting like now Now Yo. gold chains and diamond pendants is a I bad thing. Nice. Nigga, he's the, he's the same person that... he. You know how many people he made by Jesus Pieces? Now Jesus Pieces ain't cool. Like, I'm just... You're right. Listen, There's some listen, hypocrisy there. There's nothing I wrong with niggas wearing gold and diamonds. We want to shine because we've been in the dirt. That's why we fucking wear gold all and right, diamonds right. all the time. No, no, no. Right? <laughs> Yo, this... this <laughs> Niggas wanna shine, man. He had that line for a long time. Niggas wanna shine. Look at him with a rollie on. Yeah, I wanna shine, man. I wanna fucking shine. I'm just saying, don't knock it now. Like, yo, let's not knock it now. Kanye, don't worry. I'm recruiting this nigga to Sunday service. No, I will not be there wearing them purple fucking sweatsuits. Will y'all come with me to Sunday service? No, nigga, you can go to that shit yourself and tell us about it. I'm not saying I was going. I was just trying to see if y'all would come. Fuck no. All I'm saying is, Yo, listen to it. We got you. We, we got going you. to Dykeman. We got you. We, we going to go to Dykeman. Oh, my God. Go All right, but could we get enlightened? I'm cool. Yay is enlightened. A little Very bit. spiritual. I'm in Yo, touch with the universe. Yay, no, I'm not going to lie to you. Are you done? He's outside the matrix of conventional thinking. I know why you moved to Wyoming. Why are you talking about I'm the serious. matrix? What, next, he, next, next, I promise you, next this nigga going to start Yo. saying leftist. Yo, he no, going to no, start no, saying no, the no, word no. leftist. No political shit. No political shit. Right, I think he's 100% spot on when he talks about entertainers mm-hmm. being fucking almost mind control in the system that they're in. And him moving out of that shit and where, like, to keep it real, we were talking about likes for the first half of this episode. Yeah. Right. Who the first thing I see, at least I see, that come up and say, yo, all this like shit, even though at first we were very skeptical of why he was saying it, right. all this like shit, this shit is bullshit. Like, this shit is controlling people's thoughts. Yeah, yeah. Instagram is controlling people's yeah. thoughts. Now we're realizing Instagram is like, oh, let's Nobody try Nobody didn't this. just realize that, bro. <laughs> Niggas know what it is. We People just don't, people are not disciplined <laughs> to not fall into the fucking trap. F- f- look, listen, listen, the nigga say some cool shit. I'm not knocking that. All I'm saying is this. Now everything, everything that we love is now bullshit because your last two albums was trash. Your last two albums was trash and niggas ain't like them like that and people not jacking you perception wise. Now it's, you know what? I'm against all of this. All this rap shit is no good. No more fucking bitches. No more uh, buying out the bar. No, nigga, you could have been saying that. We've been doing it to your music for years. Now all of a sudden, it's no, you shouldn't do that. Everybody just supposed to change Hold overnight? I, Fuck that, man. I, I agree. I'm not jacking with, that. I, listen, I'm not while jacking I can that. say I agree with a lot of stuff he's been saying in interviews, <clears> mm-hmm. I could also admit and agree that I still don't believe the music has been the best. Like, there's, like it doesn't mean I'm you just pro Kanye. No, I, I didn't change like my opinion on the music. Uh-huh. I'm just saying listening to him because yeah. I don't think music is his first, he's not second, saying nothing third, wrong. or <laughs> look, look, fourth focus. And, and that, my fault, I mean, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm cutting you off, but like, He's not saying nothing wrong. I'm just saying it's so convenient at the time for you to say it. When niggas stop jacking you, you got this shit is like Bullworth, <clears> man. You ever seen the movie Bullworth? It's like Bullworth. Oh no, for yeah, real, no, y'all. Roger, could you Warren like, Beatty. Like, it's a movie. The movie no, the, 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 like, the movie, no, the movie Bullworth is about know. Warren Beatty. He's a politician, and he they want him to say all of this shit to 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 try to get votes and all of that. And he just he he sets up he puts a contract on his own self to get killed, right? Because he doesn't, he just is bugging out his mind, and he just starts saying all this shit that black people want to hear. So black people start jacking him, and then he tries to take the contract off of himself. This shit is like the movie Bullworth. Like I'm just saying, wow. like the I, <clears throat> what he's saying is right. It's just it's the messenger, bro. That's all I'm saying. It's the messenger and the timing. 
So if you're going to say that, guess what? I expect your wife to be fully garbed down now. And you're trying to convert her that and she's not jacking that. He's not saying nothing wrong. It's just coming from him. Think about this, man. When nigga, you, you know, know who niggas, you know who niggas in the hood. And I that you out know who young niggas in the hood never listen to? Who? Niggas in the young niggas in the hood never listen to nobody who never did shit. No, for real. Mm -hmm. Like the people in the hood, young niggas that's on the corner, they identify what they gonna interpret and take from you based on the success you have. <clears throat> so if you have no success, they like, I'm not listening to this nigga. He don't get no money. Fuck, I'm listening to them for right. So. He's done all these things. He's built us up over the past 16 years with his music, and now tomorrow he just changes and tells us all of us we're wrong. You was the you was one of the people that's one of the biggest parts of it too. All of the clothing, even with the clothing shit, bro. If we talking about likes and all of that shit, then why are you not? Why is Yeezy not cheaper? Okay. Wait, wait, wait. No, for real. <clears throat> if we gonna talk all of that, then if you could make clothes out of algae and all that, then why your fucking sweater that look like it's been washed 1,500 times cost 700 dollars? Tell me that. Well, listen. President of 2024. My only point is. <laughs> For real, with Kanye, I just want to know that. I do believe that entertainers, and we've seen this, this Kanye isn't the first and he won't be the last. We're going to stop in the desk. No, no, right. no, this is my last point. Right. <clears throat> I do believe that Kanye has realized that a lot of these people who are in position of power, they have a lot of money or they, they influence a lot of people, mm -hmm. they think that they're, they're independent thinkers. I think Kanye, in whatever weird means it happened, he realized that. Nigga, you're not that much of an independent thinker because if you don't think what other people want you to think, it's a fucking problem. And I think that bugged him out mm -hmm. that now he's doing a lot of things that's counterculture. Okay. And once you do shit counter that's counterculture... <clears throat> cancel culture. No, when you do a lot the of culture. shit that's counterculture, people look at you like you're a really weirdo. I'm just, I'm just saying that. Bro, the nigga's a weirdo. It, yeah, I'm just okay. keeping it up. All right, cool. Yeah. Guys, thank you for right. that deep debate. I'm thank sorry. You. I'm numb to Kanye now. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm... I'm, that's good. I'm bringing you to Sunday service. I'm cool. I'm cool for life. Every time you talk about any hypocrisy, you're just a hater. Even yeah, if, you're just Even a hater. if you've been a fan for like a decade, there's that's no valid points. so I'm just gonna shut the fuck up about him. Because I'm a hypocrite. For life. Um, let's go on this. Uh, so you said you watched uh, Camp Flognaw this weekend, right? Oh, great festival. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you on today? <laughs> it came so direct and so fast. All right, man. There's not nothing to think about. So, I got to be there next year in person. <clears throat> I would love to go next year, Me too. Me, too. All right, so I guess fans were expecting Frank Ocean to headline on Sunday, and that didn't happen. Tyler brought out Drake instead. And even I'm shocked by this. They booed him. <laughs> Yo. Man, this is crazy, yo. I never Listen, man, thought. I love Frank Ocean. He's probably the only artist I would embarrass myself in front of, but like I cannot imagine booing when Drake comes out. But I mean, you know what it is? Wow. You have to understand that this is a you have to understand the odd future fan. These is odd future kids. These is kids mm -hmm. that was Thrashing before wearing thrasher <laughs> hoodies was cool. It was a commercial thing. These are the kids that was like skating and sk wearing skate mental and all that shit. They don't give a fuck about Drake. You get what I'm saying? Like they, that's not their thing. Frank Ocean, not just because of the R&B, he's a part of our future. It's Camp Flognaw. If you, you know it's like I, mean? I know he is, but I didn't know that they were. Oh no! Nah, it's come on! It's crazy. That shit is. They set up orbs. I they watched set this orbs whole up. thing. <clears throat> they set them up. Listen, great festival, but. 21 Savage headlined the day before. Uh -huh. He comes out with 21 Savage. Trust me, it's like, ah, it would have been crazy. Uh -huh. right? What it is is that the fans were hanging on. There was this surprise performer right. that was headlining the whole thing, and no one knew who it was. So you get uh, YG perform, <clears throat> then you had the baby and to the baby. Again, you know, I, I've never seen the baby perform live, but I watched it. Yo, he is so energetic. Mm -hmm. He doesn't look like a rookie. He performed better than most of the veterans there. Mm -hmm. But after the baby is a surprise performance, so Tyler comes back out. Yo, thank y'all for coming. But you know, it's, it's really our future fans, as you say. Yeah. Brings out Uzi. They love Uzi. Of course. But Uzi doesn't stay past his welcome. Uh, Three songs. Hey, it do not matter. It does his thing. Out of there. Drake comes, and I guess Drake was really the headliner. They had this thought that Frank Ocean was going to be the headliner. So that's the setup. Yikes. You should have told him, there's no Frank. He's not coming. If they had told him that to kill expectations, they wouldn't have booed Drake. They would have understand you're getting someone else other than Frank. That's tough. That's though. crazy. Like, wow. how did, I'm just like I, I never thought. <clears throat> I, I would never think of Drake being booed. For that's anything. what I'm saying. Like, like I understand being disappointed by the the artist that's that filling in, but Drake he has a, at least enough Universal songs that I would think booing and, him. And he did do it. Wild. He did most of Universal songs. Matter of fact, he did even other songs that 
He said Tyler himself. Did it get better? It. This was just the initial reaction. Did they warm up then at well, least well, once you know, they're over the what, initial shock? I've been trying to speak to more people because like so like there's one particular person live streaming. I don't know if it was just their section mm -hmm. booing mm -hmm. or it was Boo's unit. You just right in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But but to be honest, like I was watching the thing and everybody was just they're on they're on edge because they're like, hey, oh great, it's Drake, and they're like, okay. When's Frank coming out? Right. Mm -hmm. They stayed there after the concert was over. Like they were packing up, and they were like, "Wait, we still think so Frank, Frank is coming out." Not coming out again. Damn. Just based on that, <clears throat> and honestly, I, it's a credit to how diverse hip hop fan bases are. Right. Like that was a. I don't know if it's disrespectful to call them a hipster fan base majority or like primarily, but they weren't there for Drake. Yeah. You know, but, but I'm pretty Savage sure they love Drake's cool. music, but it's like. If, it's if you a time are, and place for everything, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you're an Odd Future fan and you at Camp Flognard, which is Tyler's fucking festival, you're expecting to see some Odd Future shit go down. So, <coughs> yeah, they set, they set him up. Said Drake, I'm going to... And I think he was visibly upset because he says, yo, I could rock all night. Y'all want me to go all night? Let me hear y'all. And, <laughs> and at least from that section we were hearing, Damn. we heard booths. And he walked off kind of awkwardly, like, all right, fuck this. You know, hurt his feelings, but, you nah, know, he'll come back with a, crazy. a classic. Wow. <laughs> all right, man. He'll be all right, though. He'll Let us Drake. end fine, uh, right? with this. They ain't even deserve him anyway. <laughs> you deserve Drake. All right, we got to go, actually. Sorry, we can't get to this last one. But I'll just say, YG brought out uh, Stormy Daniels. So that's the porn star that Donald Trump was allegedly, or not allegedly, just involved with uh, to say fuck, fuck Donald Trump. Trump. And that's it. That's our show for today. Thank you guys for watching. Why we'll is see you Donald tomorrow Trump's on Everyday to, Struggle. Like, like a, a, a fucking celebrity. Because he's a president. Because he's a celebrity and he's the president.